The Lucas sequence is a generic grouping of recurrence relations that forms a sequence of related numbers. This sequence can be defined as shown below. As a group, we spent time exploring the Lucas sequence, and more specifically, the Lucas numbers. The Lucas numbers can be categorized within the Lucas sequence. They are defined as shown below, starting with an initial value of 2, then 1, then 3, then 4, and so on adding the two previous numbers in the sequence to produce the next. This is an extensive list of the Lucas numbers that we developed according to the definition. We then were able to look for different patterns within the numbers, starting with our interest in the individual digits of the numbers. For my exploration of the Lucas numbers, I decided to look at digit frequency. I was primarily focused on the frequency of the numbers 1 through 9 in the leftmost digit of the series. I also examined the sum of the frequencies of the numbers 0 through 9 in the first 10 digits of the series. This is a chart that shows the first 400 numbers in the Lucas series. Using the data from this chart, I created two histograms. The first being the frequency of the numbers in the first digit. The second being the frequency of the numbers in the first 10 digits. As you can see, this graph is skewed to the left. This one is fairly uniform. From this point, I decided to examine other Lucas sequences, including the Fibonacci and other generic sequences. As you can see, the first digit graph continues to be skewed to the left, while the sum digit graph continues to be fairly uniform. And this is true for all of this, the sequences I generated. At this point, I decided to purely focus on the first digit. Using the frequencies from Lucas, Fibonacci, and my generic sequences, I came up with an average frequency chart. I then transformed this into a cumulative frequency chart. As you can see, my R-squared value is fairly high, being 0.993. I decided that I could do better and I wanted to add another data point, this point being 0, 0. However, the natural log function cannot handle 0, so in order to do this, I needed to shift my data set by 1. After doing this, I achieved an R-squared value of 1 and this equation. I decided to transform this coefficient on natural log of x to be in log base 10. This is the formula to transform it, and in doing so, you achieve the value of 1, which leads to this equation. The cumulative distribution can be shown through this, and then the probability distribution can be shown by this equation. I decided to do some real-life testing of my model. I looked at the prices of the stock starting with the letter B trading on the New York Stock Exchange and the population estimates of cities with more than 100,000 people. This information somewhat obeys my model, with the data being mainly skewed to the left. The, the city population estimates also somewhat obey my model, but are more extreme to the left. Both of these examples obey my distribution because they are both well approximated by exponential growth functions. These graphs are three graphs of 2 to the x, with the y on the horizontal axis and the x on the vertical. For our purposes, it is more useful to think of the horizontal axis as being t for time. Also, consider each jump as taking the same time interval. It requires more jumps and thus more time in the beginning, and hardly any time is spent in the later parts. Once it reaches a new magnitude, this pattern resets. This produces my distribution. As we studied the digits within the Lucas numbers, I became interested in the patterns that we saw within. We began to see different sets within the Lucas numbers when we began to break down how many digits each number has. Starting at the top, we see the numbers that have only one digit. Here we have five numbers. These five numbers have two digits. Continuing down and to the right, we can see that five numbers have three digits, five numbers have four digits, however, there are only four numbers that have five digits. We found it interesting that some of these sets would have five numbers, while others would only have four. While searching for an explanation for this pattern, 
we turn back to a previous exploration that we had within the Lucas numbers. Earlier, we found that as we went through the Lucas numbers, there could be an approximation 1.618 times the previous number to get to the next number in the Lucas numbers. Although the approximation seems rough to start, starting at 0.5, then jumping to 3, we can see that over the course of the Lucas numbers, it begins to stabilize at this 1.618. Through our exploration, we realized that this was the golden ratio, but we believe that it could provide an explanation for why some of the sets have five numbers while others only have four numbers. We could use our previous knowledge of the Fibonacci numbers in order to prove the value of this ratio. We start by calling the ratio r. We know r is defined by f of n divided by f of n minus 1, which is also the same thing as f of n minus 1 divided by f of n minus 2 f of n is defined by f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 1. After some algebraic manipulation, we arrive at r squared equals 1 plus r. Then, by using quadratic formula, we can arrive at the answer that our ratio is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And in fact, this means that our ratio is approximately equal to 1.618. We knew that we move from set to set by tens, starting with one digit, two digits, three digits, and so on. So we initially modeled this relationship by 1.618 to the x. However, we knew we could rewrite this as 10 raised to the log base 10, 1.618, multiplied by x. These two equations are mathematically equivalent. The second equation shows us that one out of every log base 10, 1.618 numbers will produce a new set. If we evaluate 1 divided by log base 10, 1.618, this is approximately 4.785. This makes sense because some of the sets have four values and some of the sets have five values. Therefore, we knew that multiples of 4.785 would be the number of values required to add a digit to a number in the Lucas numbers and therefore to create a new set. So by multiplying 4.785, we produce the number of values required to move from set to set. Because 4.785 is an approximation in itself, we decided to truncate the values. Then, by subtracting each value by the previous value in this new list, we were able to determine the size of each set. We saw that indeed we were correct in that the fifth set only had four values, along with the tenth set, fifteenth set, and so on. We believe that this was an interesting observation that we made about the Lucas numbers. However, there is clearly a logical explanation to the pattern. We also wondered about number divisibility. Do the numbers that start a Lucas series have any correlation to each individual number in the Lucas sequence? Beyond that, are there any patterns with how the numbers within a Lucas sequence can be divided? As you can see here, we have marked tallies in the appropriate columns where the Lucas numbers divided evenly by that number. The best thing that we found with looking at, a nu at number divisibility is that there is in fact a distinct pattern. The pattern changes with every number. For instance, every fourth number is divided by 3. From here, we did the same thing with Fibonacci numbers. Not surprisingly, we found the same thing to be true. There was a surprising amount of similarity, though. For instance, the patterns were the same for numbers 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 9, only leaving out 5 and 8 to be different. After all of our explorations, we were left with several questions left unanswered. We were curious about prime factorization and wondered whether or not there was a pattern with this, just as we saw in number divisibility. There must be other patterns with the Lucas sequence that we would be able to further explore in the future as well. There is a possibility that these same patterns apply to the other sets of the Lucas sequence, including the Fibonacci numbers, Pell numbers, Fermat numbers, Marseille numbers, and others. As always, our math exploration is never finished. There's plenty more to be explored.